Welcome to True Power, home of the most powerful marketing tools, training, and technology on planet Earth. Get ready to earn, enjoy, and experience more than you ever dreamed was possible. If you're tired of just getting by and ready to really thrive, then buckle in and listen up. Here's your host, Matt Fox. Well, hello and welcome to Troop Academy. And this is episode 242. Today, we want to talk about uh, going over an overview of what is power factor and the causes of power factor and how to offer power factor correction through the utility audit and or the autopilot program. And then of course, we will follow up with a little Q&A session. And during that Q&A session, we will also be talking about some new affordable solar options that is going to be available in more states. And we're going to have more training on that here in the next week or so. So uh, without any further ado, let me share my screen. And what I want to do is actually provide uh, a little video that will kind of talk a little bit about Power Factor and how that works. So. Are complicated electricity bills and rising utility charges eating into your profits? There is one charge on your electricity account that can be controlled and reduced without the need to turn off your electrical equipment. If you haven't addressed this component of your electricity account yet, your company could be losing thousands of dollars per month. What are we talking about and why is it important? We're talking about power factor penalties. Power Factor is a measurement of how effectively your premises uses its electricity. Power Factor is a ratio of the power used, called your working power or kilowatts, divided by the power supplied to you, called total power or KVA. What's the difference between working power and total power? The difference between the working power and the total power is called reactive power or KVAR. Reactive power is the non-working power delivered to a facility. Why would I have non-working power? Inductive power equipment such as electrical motors, transformers, a ballast in a luminaire, a welding set or an induction furnace are just some of the equipment that will cause your facility to run with a low power factor. Nearly every site, no matter what your industry, will have a poor power factor and if you have a KVA demand component on your bill, you will be penalised for having a poor power factor. How do I get rid of this charge? by installing a custom-designed power factor correction system, also known as a capacitor bank. These temporary storage units provide reactive power to your motors instead of receiving it from the utility company. Both kilowatts and KVAR come from the utility. When a capacitor bank is installed in your facility, it replaces the reactive power supplied by the utility, thus reducing the total power, KVA, delivered to your facility. Reduced power from the utilities equals reduced costs. Got it? All right. So that's just a high level view of what power factor is. And actually, power factor also has a big play on your demand. And so when you're looking at uh, load factor calculations and power factor calculations, uh, they're going to have a direct effect on what the suppliers are going to offer you based on that criteria. So load factor in essence uh, means efficiency, and it is the ratio of actual kilowatt hours used in a given period divided by the total possible kilowatt hours that could have been used uh, for that same time period at a peak uh, kilowatt level established by the customer during the billing period. So a high load factor is really a good thing and a low load factor is a bad thing. A low load factor means that you are using electricity inefficiently uh, relative to what you could be if you were controlling your peak demand. So load factor is calculating using a few simple numbers uh, from the electricity bill 
uh, and the information that is required is the actual KWH hours used during the billing period in KWH, uh, the peak kilowatt demand in KW, and the number of days in the billing period. And so if uh, you want to learn a little bit more about that, there is actually a place on the uh, CRM where you can pull down more information. So if we go to the CRM underneath the documents, go right under here in True Power, and you will see uh, right here, number seven, which is load factor, understanding load factor and how that works. And so that's going to give you the calculations a little bit uh, better understanding as to how all of that works. Well, I want to simplify this uh, to make sense as much as possible. So uh, I've put together a little chart that I think will make things a little easier. So if we were looking at a customer's <clears throat> if we were looking at a customer's electric bill, and we can see that this customer is pretty typical for most people, where you see in August and during the hot months, the usage is going to be higher. Uh, and then in the colder months, that drops down for their electricity. Well, if you take and uh, look at this top one here in August and you draw a line horizontally out 12 months, then from this line down to where they operate or whatever their usage is, that demand is going to end up being a penalty. So when you look at that gray area, because when you use energy at a certain level, then the utility company sets that bar and says, we have to have that available to you all the time. And you did it once, so we're going to have to have it available. If you don't use it, since it can't be stored, then you're going to pay a power factor penalty uh, for the energy that you do not use. And so you can see that in this case, there's just about as much energy that they're not using as much as they are using. So by putting in capacitor banks, we are taking away uh, the need to draw from the utility and we don't end up with those spikes uh, in our utility bill. So now you can take and look at it. The, the capacitor bank is going to lower all of those spikes and, and keep it more of an even keel so that the amount of energy that they're using on demand is going to be a lot smoother. Some of the other side benefits is that a capacitor bank is also going to surge protect the entire facility. So your equipment uh, is going to be protected. It also changes the wavelength of the electricity as it's coming into the facility, which means maintenance and equipment life expectancy is going to be extended. So. Uh, it's always going to be a good thing outside of the fact that it's going to lower uh, your demand so that you're typically going to see an ROI on the equipment of about 12 to 18 months. Um, and some of it can be a little bit better than that, but that's pretty realistic, a 12 to 18 month ROI in what you would save. Here's the, the part that you don't see, and that is once you fix the demand or the power factor issues, then that is also going to give you an opportunity when you're pricing, the utility or the suppliers are going to look at that load factor and say, okay, well, their load factor is high. It's above 0.95. That means that we will give them far more aggressive pricing. And I've seen uh, pricing be uh, three to 8%, sometimes even more, uh, just because if you have a high uh, power factor, then that's a good thing. And so 
we want to make sure that we're getting the best prices possible. So by putting in that equipment is going to provide a customer uh, a, a great opportunity, not only in protecting all of their equipment, lowering their usage, as well as looking at getting much more aggressive pricing in the near future. So if you go over to the corporate website under services, there is an area which is dedicated to Power Factor, and you can learn a lot more about Power Factor and how that works and what the capacitor banks can do for you. Um, the green energy panel uh, is something that we've been manufacturing for 25 years. And so you have some that are rated for residential, different sizes for different commercial. And of course, our engineers will be able to let the customer know what is going to be best for them based on looking at that bill. And if you want to learn more in-depth detail on how Power Factor works, then there's a nice video that will get into more of the uh, details and a lot of the calculations and things like that. So between that and the information that is available on the CRM, I think there's a lot that you can look at that will help you understand a little bit more. I think that the big selling factor here is now, since we have recently just lowered the required amount for a customer on the utility audit. In other words, it used to be where they had to have a minimum spend of $10,000 a month or more in order to submit it to be audited. Now it really doesn't matter. So whether you're submitting a customer for a utility audit, regardless of size, go ahead and submit those utility bills for commercial. And if you are using the autopilot program for residential, then those will also get reviewed for Power Factor as well. So we are now implementing Power Factor mm -hmm. correction implementation as part of the utility audit and the autopilot uh, process. So once you upload those bills, you know that somebody is going to review that and make sure. So you don't have to really worry about doing all of those calculations uh, to try and remember or how to do it because they can be a little bit complicated. So this is going to give you a lot more um, avenue to make more revenue and also provide additional services. Outside of the fact that it's going to lower their, their demand, it's going to give you an opportunity in the future when you price that customer for renewal or when you put that in for auction, the suppliers are going to be far more aggressive and you're going to have a lot more available to you because their load is going to meet the criteria that the suppliers are looking for. So that's going to always be a huge, huge benefit in pricing customers. So uh, again, that uh, um, calculation or that, that demand that you see in this gray area is what we're going to reduce and get rid of so that we're putting the customer on a much more even keel and being able to provide them a lot more value in that regard. So I know that this is uh, a lot of information to try and digest. The good news is the engineers uh, through the auditing and the autopilot are going to automatically process that. Um, you should typically get a response back from the auditors uh, within three to five days uh, as to the results of the power factor correction uh, recommendations. So you can have that conversation with your customers uh, while they're continuing to move forward with the utility audit. So the utility audit 
can take 30, 60, 90 days, sometimes even 120 days, depending on the size and complexity of that uh, audit. The autopilot really only takes about five to 10 days to process. So it's a much quicker process, but the utility audit does take some time. So I would call that tomorrow money. And while we're waiting for the auditors to finish the audit, that's when you go right into phase two and put that same information into the pricing platform to create the proposal so that we can create today money by providing the customer a value proposition at the supplier level moving forward. So I'm going to take a little bit of a, a break right here um, and open the floor for a, a little Q&A. And then we are going to discuss a little bit about the solar that is coming uh, down the pipe. All right, that was a good Q&A session. I appreciate everybody being on the call today. Uh, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. So have fun storming the castle. We'll see you next time. Bye now.